Welcome to Studio Rai. I'm Alka Kuparadze, the anchor of our tele discussion. And uh, uh, today uh, we are going to talk about the conflicts, uh, highlighting conflicts in uh, Georgia. We're going to uh, present different. Uh, uh, projects uh, that our colleagues uh, in Abkhazia and uh, South Association directions are implementing. We are going to have Mr. Thomas uh, Deval, leading uh, researcher for Carnegie Fund in Eastern Europe and Caucasus, uh, South uh, Caucasus. And uh, now we are having here different uh, colleagues, different NGOs, Natia Chankvetadze, Charity Humanitarian Fund Abkhazia, uh, peace uh, Building uh, Project uh, Coordinator, Radrachi Ahlediani, NGO Umbra founder. And uh, uh, in our discussion, we are going to present our young guests uh, who are interested in uh, conflict resolutions, conflict topics, and they are representing different organizations and NGOs and uh, universities. And we're going to have two blocks in our show. One is uh, a news uh, digest from South Asia and Abkhazia. And uh, second is, um, I mean, at the end of our show, we are going to offer a media monitoring. Uh, I mean, just uh, our journalist in Nogelish villages will update you about these two blogs. So let's get back to our uh, studio hall and let's talk about the projects implemented by our guests. Natia, please talk about our uh, just uh, your organization and uh, just represent yourself and uh, just introduce uh, uh, your uh, project in terms of conflict resolution. Uh, first of all, let me welcome the audience uh, and uh, the studio guests here, and uh, let me thank you for inviting to the show. As you said, I represent Humanitarian Charity Center of Hesium, and uh, we have been uh, since long, uh, been working uh, since 1995, I think, and uh, since uh, then uh, we serve uh, conflict-affected uh, populations. So two main principles, I mean, just uh, live Livelihood uh, availability increase and uh, and uh, social and economic rehabilitation and uh, just integration and contribution to conflict affected uh, uh, peoples uh, and uh, one of the ways that was. Uh, um, charity. Now, just we are in the process of adapting, uh, and it's going to be trust uh, building and peace building. Um, uh, so from the format that meant, I mean, uh, fast uh, uh, response to these needs, now we are uh, just uh, going to introduce more long-term projects. So let me interrupt, and uh, now let me show some uh, photos. Uh, and uh, please command these photos. Uh, so these photos... Uh, we were taken in April 2017. It's uh, uh, just a close-up event of one of our projects. Uh, um, and uh, in April, uh, we had just a wrap-up uh, event. Uh, here is the exhibition. The project was about uh, uh, Hurvaleti, and I mean just uh, uh, ladies, and Tsrin Valley, and uh, eight uh, village. Uh, uh, eight villages and the ladies who were from these villages. Uh, the project contained two components. I'm, one was uh, handwork classes and second was uh, culture classes. And what you see is just uh, the outcome of this project. Um, I mean, uh, they just uh, learned how to uh, weave, uh, how to uh, uh, make this uh, tapestry and uh, things like that. So it was supported by uh, trust uh, peace building mechanism. It was uh, rather uh, short term, but very just uh, intense. I mean, uh, three times actually. Shashvati Horvaleti, but in Sril Valley. So what was the uh, way the project worked? Did you have any partners there? Yes. Um, so we had uh, just a joint uh, start. Uh, I mean, uh, Center Abkhazia and our partner organization from Skin Valley. 
So first meeting we had in Borjomi, I mean coordination meeting, we discussed the details and we planned the event. And then uh, uh, four Skype meetings followed. So our association colleagues came to Borjomi, yes? Uh, yes, not everybody, but just uh, coordinators were there. and. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, it was followed with the wrap-up meeting, uh, I mean, workshop and uh, culture events, and in Tbilisi as well, it continued. Uh, so it was parallel project. Uh, so five works, uh, five groups were working in Skin Valley. I mean, art lessons, and we had eight. Uh, they had, I mean, eight uh, cultural events and. Uh, uh, beneficiaries were very happy about the project, uh, uh, so, but unfortunately the middle part of the project uh, was only Skype-based uh, uh, for just objective reasons. Definitely this is a very important project, and most importantly, uh, people who lost uh, livelihood and jobs and property, these people are just uh, again being reintegrated uh, and uh, they have an opportunity to uh, use uh, their potential and uh, to apply their knowledge. So what can you say about uh, uh, that side, I mean, who just w was engaged there and participants from a session side? First of all, it's not just a typical uh, project uh, for peace building. This was a little different, and I would say it was an innovative project, uh, and uh, it uh, just uh, envisaged uh, involvement into common activities, and uh, uh, in Srin Valley mostly ladies participated and representatives of uh, mixed uh, families, and uh, as I know, uh, it's, uh, well, just a vulnerable group, I mean, there are those who represent uh, mixed families and they had just uh, clubbing activities, uh, some lessons and different culture events as well were organized. However, there were some challenges uh, which we are not surprised at, it is no wonder. And uh, in Gori, in Shashveti, in Kurvaleti, and uh, also a handy handwork, uh, handcraft uh, classes. Uh, however, we had less number of cultural events. And the goal of the project, I mean, two main goals of the project was I mean, to overcome the isolation uh, for these people, I mean, to get over the just isolated, uh, solitary life. Uh, uh, and uh, I mean, I'm speaking about uh, uh, elderly people, I mean, just uh, those people who are just uh, past uh, middle age. Uh, and uh, our goal was to engage uh, these people in some activities that would make their life more worthwhile. And second thing is, uh, uh, so we plan to plan some, uh, let's say, some common activities actually for us Asians and Georgians within the framework of the project. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's very important, and I'd like to remind our uh, audience uh, that uh, our discussion and our project, I mean, studio project, uh, uh, are supported by the United Nations and European Union. Uh, I mean, program COBER, uh, which, I mean, uh, stipulates and envisages uh, uh, early reaction uh, prevention and uh, peace building, uh, trust building. So, Dacha, please know you. I welcome everybody here. Thank you for the invitation here. So, our organization uh, thinks it's very strong. I mean, just uh, we were just set up as an initiative group. Um, uh, and I just, we never uh, specify, actually, just. Uh, uh, and I, um, I'm not trying to reduce uh, anyone else's uh, contribution, but I mean, conflict is seen from the conflict region is quite different. Uh, that does not take any special things to take the conflict actually just uh, through your own eyes. And we just decided to set up just initiative group. And uh, initially, just we used, uh, I mean, uh, well, actually, it comes from Gala region, but uh, mostly. Uh, a few other regions actually and few Abkhazians study here 
and uh, we de decided to use the activities of the students uh, to involve the students uh, coming from that region uh, and we decided to assist them and then we set up an organization just about five months ago um, and uh, we conduct some public uh, lectures and we invite uh, some guests, uh, professors and we are in contact with uh, just the young press. I mean your meetings uh, and you just uh, invite just uh, experts uh, so the audience are just made of this uh, interested people and stakeholders I mean, people from conflict regions I mean Gali and uh, um, so, I mean, in, in short, uh, uh, who represents this audience? Yes, of course, you're right. So, for example, a project was uh, held in State University. For example, we invited Mr. Graham Morio de Sharia and uh, Georgi Parishishvili, NATO uh, and Europe, uh, European House uh, a deputy director and those people who, unlike us, have been working for many years in Abkhazian uh, direction. So why we decided to implement this project? Problem is not only young Abkhazians, Abkhazian sources. I think we all hear that our neighbors, our friends also say that things that we lost by war, we have to get it back only through war. So, uh, And we just tried, uh, you know, to have some debates. Uh, uh, for example, such, uh, well, uh, reactions uh, were voiced at the meeting. Actually, of course, everybody has his own opinion. We don't mind that, but we uh, want to ask some I mean, young people uh, to be together only through peace and through diplomacy, only just peaceful ways. And, of course, we are trying to contact young Abkhazians. Um, but I'm not going to be just uh, to go in details here because, you know, that some problems may occur to those people and to those young Abkhazians who work as a project. But just talk generally. We'll, we'll just what these activities just cover. We are not asking you actually just to name any organization or persons. Yeah. Mostly we talked about non-visa regime, about... Uh, uh, tourism. I mean, with residents of Abkhazia, yes, with uh, yes, ethnic Abkhazians, uh, ethnic Georgians too. Uh, except, yeah, actually, um, if but for politics, actually, we talked about uh, any other topic. I mean, we talked about discuss some tourism things, development of tourism. Uh, I mean, as I said, non-visa regime with European countries, uh, and I talked about the visa procedures. Mm, and, for example, taking passports for Abkhazians, Georgian passports, is very difficult. And uh, I would urge you, I mean, uh, the state structures to simplify these uh, procedures. Because, you know, I mean, uh, those who want to take Georgian passports, procedures are extremely complicated. I mean, we expect great results uh, of this uh, non-visa regime. Are they interested? What do you think? You know, just step by step, yes. It, well, it's not going to happen just overnight. But are they are they saying that they're going to use this? Uh, uh, you see, the things that majority of Abkhazians don't have Russian citizenship, and even if they had, you know, it's actually related. It's very cost attached, and. Uh, um, but uh, through Georgia, they can easily travel to European countries, and uh, and I think it's not not good that just because of small details, uh, they are not coming here and uh, take passport. For example, if I tell them that. Uh, well, okay, please come, George, and you will get anyway a passport. I cannot do that because I don't know what these commissions uh, just are going to say to those who, I mean, from Abkhazia. But I heard that uh, unless someone is... Uh, uh, someone has some criminal record, uh, everyone is granted uh, Georgia citizenship and uh, a Georgian passport as well. And, uh, and uh, I think after ID, after Georgian IDs, uh, uh, there is only one step for them to take this step and get a passport. So, yes, we welcome that, and uh, you did a very good job that you managed uh, uh, to invite uh, young Abkhazians. I think it was a very bold step, and I do welcome that. Any questions, guys? Any questions? No? No questions? All right. Yes, please, please. 
Marcus Saratonia, Peace and Development Academy, our organization was set up uh, uh, on the basis of the program 1999-2003. We had a program just young leaders just uh, for peace and uh, development, and uh, it's not very well known for general public. I mean, again, for safety reasons, uh, media was not, just media were not involved. Uh, our representatives uh, were here in our studio, and they talked more than once, but I simply want to share the experience. I do welcome not to your program and Dutch your initiative as well. And the first thing... Uh, I think that only long-term programs actually are efficient. I don't uh, welcome the initiatives uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, three days, dialogues, and uh, once uh, uh, just uh, six months, uh, these people then go home and uh, they go home and do nothing. And they uh, in after 60 months, they uh, come back again. But different thing is when they have some threats, some community, some uh, active joint activities. Uh, for example, we created uh, three textbooks jointly and we just uh, simulated some conflicts and they are actually very efficient and it works. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, show, actually, TV shows are watched only those people who are just are interested in. And it's, all, of course, an extremely important when people meet. Uh, they should be quite ready for these meetings. Do you mean Georgian uh, participants? Yes. Yes, I mean Georgian participants. I mean, very often I hear that uh, uh, people are just participating uh, on behalf of Georgia. I can clearly say that uh, they have uh, never had any touch in Abkhazia and South Ossetian uh, conflicts, and uh, it's no very non-professional. It means that waste of time and waste of money. And uh, many people uh, just try to establish each other only based on the moods. But participants should know history, should know some uh, legal things. And uh, their emotional intelligence actually should be considered. And uh, I think we should be careful about choosing uh, candidates for programs like that. I mean, they should uh, take care of that. Thank you. That was an interesting uh, selection. As long as I know, I mean, based on my experience, uh, uh, yes, maybe coordinators don't uh, organize uh, competitions. Uh, so have you ever just uh, taken people to meetings? How have you just chosen your participants? Can you just share? Yes, we had a uh, corporate project, I mean, uh, uh, small uh, just business uh, financing, and uh, uh, depending on that, we don't have any platform for civic dialogue. Uh, uh, in Georgia, we use uh, advertisement method inside, I mean, to pick up the participants. While in Skinvala and Abkhazia, it's happening based on personal contacts. So, I mean, uh, closed information gets distributed, yes. And, uh, and uh, the fund uh, helps us to carry out uh, just health projects, for example. Uh, it's our charity way. When some of the associations need urgent medical service, we help. So, I mean, this organization is uh, highly trusted uh, and... Uh, I mean, information gets distributed, and uh, I should say something about partner organization. I'm not going to name, but there are just uh, some groups of society that uh, help us to distribute information. Dutchy, please. So what were, what, what were the criteria you chose your partners? That's very interesting. Actually, we have no luxury to choose uh, this way. So, I mean, if someone uh, expresses some wish, uh, it's enough. I mean, if I said that we had some contests and a lot of people just are willing, it wouldn't be right. 
You know that we were very careful, it was the first project, uh, and uh, we asked some structures, some NGOs, uh, some experienced people, I mean, uh, to prevent some, uh, I mean, uh, some incidents, because these four days we had to live together. Uh, so definitely any conflict has its own specifics, and uh, we personally chose candidates. We didn't have any application or any just uh, job interview type, because we were very careful to prevent some incident. Now let's go to our next block. Uh, Nino is going to uh, introduce, uh, update us with news from Tsinvala and Sohomi. And we are going to be back uh, to, together with uh, Tom Deval. Uh, let me welcome everybody. We are again proceeding the uh, news from Abkhazian South Association. Our Abkhazian Association colleagues uh, help us to fill the vacuum in Georgian media. Let's start with Abkhazia. We are offering video with direct translation. President of South Association until Bibilov is officially visiting uh, Abkhazia. Uh, on the border, he was met with uh, uh, Deputy Minister, Deputy President, Vice President, uh, uh, Mr. Gabnia, and the member of the delegation uh, visited the memorials of soldiers who died for liberation of Gagram. During two days, uh, there were meetings with President of Abkhazia and uh, between the South Asia president, and they discussed the current situation and the potential for future cooperation. Hero Path, more than 150 young people walked through Hero Pass. I mean, they just... Uh, uh, I mean, it was uh, dedicated to 24th, 24th uh, uh, anniversary of the military operations. So they, I mean, young Abkhazians walked 30 kilometers, but thinking that uh, 30 years ago Abkhazian warriors were in uh, just the worst conditions, uh, it uh, actually encouraged them. And uh, Vitaly Gabney also joined, uh, and uh, young people asked uh, interesting questions and shared emotions with each other. Uh, it was uh, and then they put flowers uh, uh, to those who died in tank T-55. Every year, just in the motherland of uh, writer Fazal Iskander, international festival is held. Uh, and uh, Russian drama theater dedicated to a performance, uh, Sofichka, uh, based on the story of Fazal Iskander. Uh, and uh, main uh, protagonists were uh, students of Moscow, Shukin uh, students under the supervision of Alina Dinsova. Audience warmly accepted the performance. Uh, international basketball tournament was held, Sergei Bagapsh uh, tournament, uh, seventh time, and invites uh, teams from different regions. So, of uh, Russia and the CIS countries. Uh, uh, this time, uh, together, Abkhazian uh, basketball team, uh, Circassian, Karachai, Circassia, and uh, Vo Donetsk and uh, Volgograd teams uh, participated. Uh, Circassians became champions, Abkhazians took second place. Uh, you have just uh, seen the news digest from Abkhazia. Now let's talk about Skin Valley News. Uh, President Anatoly Bibilov is uh, officially visiting Abkhazia. And uh, together with Vice President uh, Bibilov uh, visited uh, First President Grave, Vladislav Zibar's grave. And it was followed with uh, two presidential, two presidents meeting, and the presidents uh, declared that they are going to develop to brotherly relationships between two republics. June uh, 20, the whole world is uh, uh, celebrate just uh, refugee days. Uh, so thousands of people every year, people are forced to leave their 
uh, habitat and uh, start living in different uh, uh, places. Uh, and a lot of us Asians also became refugees 25 years ago. Majority just settled in uh, North Asia. Others were settled in uh, hostels. That's very urgent uh, problem for us Asians. And more than 20 years, these people have been waiting for better conditions uh, because uh, resident, residential houses were not being built. 2,000 people are on the wait uh, list. Today, Abkhazia parted with Nafiji, so it famous Abkhazian a literary professor. A lot of people came from North Asia and uh, other North Caucasus uh, Republic, different uh, countries and uh, towns of uh, Russia. And it was, I mean, the ceremony was held in Parliament and the different uh, people from different regions came to pay last uh, homage to the scientist. Uh, first time it was held in Parliament uh, hearing uh, hall and uh, State officials also paid their homage, including current president uh, Anto Bibilov and uh, previous uh, former president uh, of the Republic. Uh, a biological method of uh, sewage water purification is the most efficient way. And, uh, well, uh, it's carried out in South Asia, too, by a special cleaning uh, station. Uh, water goes through four purification stages. Late this year, in Satskin Valley Center, church construction is going to be over. Construction is now stop, and Megapolis construction promises uh, that they will meet the deadline. And Sonia Khubayeva, religious representative of the president, uh, says that decision of that uh, was made after 2008 war in August. As I said, digests uh, are offered directly with direct translation. However, the studio may have different opinions at certain issues. We are back at the studio, and um, as I said, this is Mr. Tom Deva, leading uh, researcher in Carnegie uh, Center in uh, Eastern European countries and in Caucasus uh, countries. So please tell us about your mission, about our uh, and about when, what uh, project you were working on. Um, Thank you, Mamuka, very much. Uh, it's great to be here. Unfortunately, I'm going to speak in Russian because I have failed to learn Georgian, but it's great to be here again. And uh, uh, I'm uh, still engaged in conflictology, and uh, I mean, Abkhazia in particular. I mean, I have been engaged with uh, Abkhazia 25 years, and uh, a few days ago, I just remember that. First time I was in Abkhazia 25 years ago as a journalist. I mean, that was before the war of 1992. And here, just, uh, well, I'm interested in the uh, project, I mean, analysis of uh, three de facto uh, uh, independent uh, countries on the map of Europe, Abkhazia, Tnestristria, and uh, North uh, Cyprus. Uh, and uh, I'm interested in uh, international uh, just uh, interplay about this um, republics, what worked and what did not work. The approaches are quite different. I would say that the most open is uh, North uh, Cyprus. There are a lot of uh, Western tourists as well, and uh, every year uh, a lot of people come there, and there is some trading and commerce. Uh, the mystery is somewhere in the middle, and Abkhazia is most isolated. Uh, and I would say that conflict is most, uh, I mean, urgent in Abkhazia as well. And um, as it becomes clear, the involvement of these uh, regions uh, into the life of uh, West, uh, is it progress for conflict resolution? Uh, why should it be interesting for our society? 
I mean, just uh, why should we contribute to this? Here, some people are skeptically saying that if these uh, regions are involved in European life, then what would they want uh, just with us? Uh, they wouldn't be interested in conflicts in Georgia. It's a very good question, and uh, of course, you know, all conflicts are different, and uh, no, I would generalize that, uh, saying that, uh, I mean, the experience of Cyprus and a little bit uh, uh, to Nestristria, I mean, where there is more international, uh, inter- uh, and there more normal uh, societies are being built. People are always looking for uh, just uh, opportunities to join the international world. And in case of Cyprus and in case of uh, Nestristria, uh, they are just uh, uh, thinking about uh, joining the world through Moldova and uh, uh, in, uh, South Cyprus, but of course it needs to set up more educated uh, layers of population and uh, then uh, go through the way of uh, conflict uh, transformation. I am, I'm not saying that conflicts in uh, Nestristria and uh, Cyprus are settled, but the tension level is a lot uh, lower. There is no violence. Uh, people are more eager to contact each other, and I think it uh, brings uh, some prospects. It would be naive to say that, uh, uh, I mean, most important that uh, the conflict should go on a transformation way. And uh, I mean, North Cyprus takes uh, the North residents take South Cyprus passports to go to Europe, and uh, Nistri Street residents also. Uh, also take Moldavian passports, and but uh, in Abkhazia still uh, the mistrust level is very. There is uh, uh, there is self isolation, and there is certain isolation on behalf of Georgia too. I think in Georgia we are not very well aware of what Abkhazians want and we are not quite sure what we can do for Abkhazians. What are the indicators uh, uh, for Abkhazians to increase the trust level towards us? So what can we do for that to support that? Of course, uh, different Abkhazians want different things. However, uh, we can say that, uh, and they say just actually, honestly, that they want independence. But what independence one just means for them? It means independence, I mean uh, autonomy, access to the world, and I think security. I think that uh, hardly ever, just hardly anyone expects a president to be Belgium, France, or uh, even uh, even Georgia, so they don't expect uh, much. Uh, as they expect less uh, of the word independence. And no, before 1999, they didn't even ask for uh, independence. Uh, it was six years uh, after the war, actually. It's important thing. And if uh, context will uh, change, I'm a local and and maybe they would be ready to settle for less. So. And uh, but again, I said that uh, it it takes trust. Uh, it takes. Uh, I mean, uh, taking off these uh, barriers, obstacles, I mean, external uh, barriers as well. And of course, here uh, Russia is at fault. But uh, again, just inside people as well. In our conflict, uh, still there are three players in this case. 
I mean, uh, number three is Russia, definitely, which, uh, uh, of course, heavily influences the dynamics of uh, our conflict. But uh, uh, do you still think that, I mean, until Russia changes her position? And personally, I'm sure that Russia is not going to be that way just uh, forever. Russia will have to become more civilized, more democratic. Uh, and I think uh, then uh, this influence would be changed. But before Russia changes, could we do uh, something uh, beneficial towards conflict resolution? And what is this? Uh, definitely, uh, conflict is uh, on the different levels. So and the uh, international level and uh, and uh, we may say that without consent of Russia nothing is going to change and uh, Russia has a lot of uh, uh, just uh, leverage actual leverages uh, and Russia and Abkhazia uh, signed the agreement uh, on the integration in many areas. And of course, it complicates things. There is the interest uh, of Abkhazia and uh, Georgia and the rest of the world. I mean, to deal with uh, health system and education, and I think that Russia is not interested, actually, in uh, these issues. Russia has uh, priorities, uh, border security. And uh, I think that there is some... Uh, uh, opportunity for international community to work here and I mean to uh, for example to improve the uh, quality of Abkhazian University and some infrastructure for better work and hardly anyone can uh, I think uh, bind uh, in Georgia against uh, things like that so here uh, I mean this area can be used uh, and I think Abkhazia uh, and Georgians are not working sufficiently. And the most important, so I mean, people who are in just involved in the civic society, I mean, we, I mean, part of uh, skeptical actually. And they say that, okay, please uh, tell us where conflicts were solved, bring us an example. So what would you say that? So what is a conflict resolution in a modern way? What our conflict could be resolved? Uh, here I have two answers. So what are other options, other alternatives? Does Georgia have any other opportunity? I mean, to solve it by force, by military force? I mean, to, yes, to capture Abkhazia or just to go against Russia and uh, uh, just demand on the occupation of Abkhazia? Unfortunately, Georgia does not have, uh, and maybe just thanks God, Georgia does not. Uh, but it's not about Georgia. So there's only soft power left, uh, which I mean, I mean, uh, the thing is that Georgia is more democratic country, more just uh, European-oriented country. Uh, uh, of course, the economy is uh, increasing and. Uh, the dialogue uh, of Georgia with Abkhazia, I would say the only way is for the conflict to get transformed. Yes, we may say that conflicts are not solved, but sometimes they are solved, but through very, very hard efforts. Um, 
for example, in Colombia, after 50 years of uh, war, and then uh, North Island, uh, Philippines, in Europe, unfortunately, uh, success is not very high. And, uh, for example, in Cyprus, uh, relationships are better. Maybe Serbia and Kosovo will also just uh, uh, sign the agreement. So, sometimes contacts actually it's hardly believable that uh, Georgian Abkhazian conflict actually will be solved, but uh, well, uh, in future, the level, I mean, the tension level uh, may, of course, uh, be reduced. So it may bring certain success. I have also thought a lot uh, about this, uh, my friends, and of course, uh, here, uh, of course, conflict resolution uh, is never going to bring us up to the pre-conflict uh, period because it's not going to be resolution. Because I mean, uh, one or two sides were not happy with something, and that was that caused the conflict. So the same thing will not be recovered. But both uh, sides uh, should uh, uh, consider actually. Uh, fears of each other. That would be the uh, transformation. So you have been watching uh, 25 years our conflict. Uh, our presidents uh, would come to Tbilisi. We were went there, and our studio actually made uh, movies. And but we don't have actually. So now we just uh, are with each other. I mean, both sides from both sides. Uh, and but our presidents are hiding this fact towards their own society. So how can you explain that? So and uh, recently I was at one of the meetings where uh, Georgian and the Asian athletes met and uh, Asians asked me um, uh, not to say anything. Uh, about their participation. I think it's a step back in terms of the dialogue and uh, and uh, so what can you say about the causes? Why our presidents and associations are not very willing to disclose their involvement in the project? Yes, uh, there is such a uh, trend. Uh, of course, uh, let's point out uh, two things. Of course, um, just uh, war 2008, uh, and uh, that pushed the region back 15-20 uh, years ago, and uh, it's tragedy for every every side and uh, and the Ukrainian crisis. I mean, an annexation of Crimea, of course, complicated things in Caucasus region as well, and. Uh, uh, it became harder for our presence. I mean, uh, I mean, their isolation, of course, uh, uh, became uh, stronger, and of course, it's hard for Georgians as well. You see, just uh, uh, now, just uh, two years ago, Russia just again conducted military activities. Uh, uh, in Ukraine, so it's complicated now, and it's uh, reflected uh, on the processes, so and on the dialogue as well. So I'd like to take it in a, a disadvantage, and you work not only through a present call, but you worked in Karabakh as well, and I think your book is one of the best uh, uh, works on that. And uh, people here like to compare these two conflicts. Uh, and I'd like to, can we raise this question this way? I mean, which conflict is easier to solve, or there is just maybe some connection? And uh, can we just other peoples of uh, Caucasus positively influence the uh, just conflict? So what do, what do you think? <laughs> 
Of course, there are some common features between the two conflicts. Uh, well, it's not. It wouldn't be too good to say that uh, uh, there are, uh, of course, incidents. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, Georgian Abkhazian conflict. But I mean, it's very rare. But in the Karabakh conflict, the situation is much worse. And the last year, 200 people died. If you remember. I mean, during this uh, four-day war, and the uh, situation is definitely a lot worse there and more dangerous. And all this current year, they are just on the brink of the conflict and on the verge of the conflict. And, uh, I mean, uh, there are so many troops uh, and heavy artillery and, uh, of course, on the level of the uh, society, emotions are very hot and the rhetoric is very aggressive. So the situation is uh, very just explosive there. There is an argument that... Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, peace activities of Georgia must be directed at Azerbaijan and Armenian dialogue as well, because if there happens a conflict, uh, uh, Georgia also is going to suffer as a uh, neighbor. And the last thing, uh, last question. Uh, I mean, after the uh, Crimea events in uh, eastern Ukraine, because uh, the conflict followed and. Uh, uh, do you think that the uh, level of attention of uh, the West uh, has been a little bit, uh, a little bit just uh, reduced, and and we are, and they say that we are not going to enjoy the support in terms of opposition with Russia. So, of course, uh, the conflict in Abkhazia, Georgia, Abkhazia, South Ossetia, uh, they left the front pages of uh, European countries, but it doesn't mean that they forgot that. And, uh, uh, but uh, nothing has been changed actually in terms of uh, interactions uh, and if uh, some crisis happens there are a lot of experienced people and uh, definitely they would uh, react immediately I think that Europe is doing uh, right thing I mean mm, I mean shifting the focus uh, on economic development of Georgia Actually, we can see some uh, success, I mean, uh, visa liberalization, and this is all correct. But I do assure you, I mean, Georgians, that uh, uh, there are people who know this conflict, who don't forget this conflict, and uh, if there is any opportunity, any windows for an opportunity, there will be competent people who will um, who will just uh, definitely react. Thank you very much. Uh, now let me go to another block and uh, uh, Nino Gelashvili now will update you with results of media uh, monitoring about Abkhazia, South Ossetia and Tbilisi uh, media. So our Abkhazian uh, colleague last uh, month watched uh, Abkhazia Inform and Independent Nuzhna Gazette. In Abkhazia, again, just uh, pay attention to international organization declarations about support of Georgia and uh, towards Georgians. Uh, negative declarations uh, use local legislation. Georgian government is not ready to find a solution in order to regulate Georgian Abkhazian conflict uh, and uh, increase uh, peace level. And as an example, they bring Geneva talks uh, I'm in the 40th round where sides uh, failed to sign non-use of uh, force uh, agreement. Abkhazians think that it's a clear example of uh, how Georgia 
Russians are not trying to take care of uh, security in the region. Darukova said that they were uh, very close to reaching an agreement, but Georgians uh, asked for just uh, putting off the meeting. And um, uh, new uh, events, actually, just uh, some dedica- they dedicated 120th anniversary of uh, some violations on behalf of Georgians. A lot of materials actually use the hate speech toward Georgian. A Resp- Republic newspaper uh, writes that 1920, when Georgian p- troops uh, came with uh, fire, they just... Uh, held the genocide uh, associations and not a single uh, association remained in their houses. In other publications, uh, they used a lot of uh, words like Georgian Nazism, Georgian Nazis, and things like that. A few times, uh, South associations officially, the ranking officials just used uh, some hate speech. Uh, representative of uh, President Bibilov, uh, Muradjev, uh, uh, just uh, commented uh, about the border science and uh, July 14th association celebrated uh, the entry of uh, uh, peace uh, makers uh, and that was the reason for using a hate speech turn towards Georgian official uh, officials use some hate speech and Anatoly Bibilov said that uh, uh, that uh, military units the commander of uh, peace uh, troops uh, today is the envoy uh, to South Asia, a republic that did not allow to destroy its people. Uh, Bibilov also used the hate speech towards Mikhail Saakashvili. July 8, South Asia declared international search for Mikhail Saakashvili until Bibilov declared that uh, they don't understand the position of international uh, court uh, towards the aggressive declaration of Mikhail Saakashvili. Uh, the article also used uh, hate speech. July and uh, August 12, uh, Victor Day, the war which was uh, actually declared by Georgian Nazis to Svetigam Sahurdia. 2008, it was ended with Victor of South Asia. And uh, and uh, in this media, Georgia is the only object uh, which uh, is addressed with uh, hate speech. And uh, other publications, Georgia is uh, negatively uh, mentioned. It's about the international support of Georgia. This is Association and Abhazian uh, uh, colleagues, uh, and uh, they're uh, just uh, watching. We offer just uh, without any... Um, comments. Uh, in Georgia, media polarization issue was very active, new banner, and uh, the society actively responded uh, with some events, and officials visited division line and international line organizations directed uh, at the support of Georgia's territorial integrity. It should be noted that uh, media, which we watched, uh, did not use any hate speech towards the stations. Don't touch, don't come near Abkhazia where wild and dangerous people live. Uh, Russia is uh, going to uh, just enter Oman, uh, just police department, special police forces in Abkhazia. It's about the uh, higher increased crime rate in Abkhazia. And uh, public broadcaster talks about uh, education issue and in state uh, university, the number of those who want to learn is uh, decreased uh, dramatically. That was the result of our media monitoring, and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Nino. This is the last part of our audience, and let me ask you that question that covers your knowledge of geography and our conflicts. Which is the deepest lake in Georgia, and where is that? It's a Ritsa Lake in Abkhazia. That's correct. Ritsa Lake is uh, 108 meters deep, and I should tell you that uh, it was uh, created uh, on the basis of uh, landslide in Zipi Gorge, and uh, no one knows the exact date, but it dates back somewhere middle centuries. Thank you for coming here. Thank you, Tom, for coming here.
So and uh, so let me say goodbye to our audience. We will see each other in one month and we are going to introduce other organizations and we're going to represent other interesting guests. Thank you very much.